a closer look uh, on UMC streaming on there. What what are we going to see in this docu series? What is? Give me something that will be surprising or shocking. You're gonna see me. You know, you're gonna see me. That's surprisingly shocking enough for most people. I've been quiet. I haven't said anything. You've never heard my perspective. I've never addressed it. I've just mm. kind of wrote punches, kept quiet about things, sucked it up. It's like I dealt with everything like def- like your family does. You know, most of the time, the dirt stuff stays within the family. You don't want it out there in the whole neighborhood, knowing your business and stuff. So I kind of lived by that. And um, as I've gotten older, just gotten more into um, just telling the facts before it's all said and done. And I'm not able to just like make sure that these facts and these things are out there in the way that they should be, um, the way they should be being told and um, and understood. And that was important to me going into this docu series. I think at the at the end of the day, you have to kind of watch it. Because there's a lot of diehards who will know a lot of the stuff to take that that was said, but then there's things that was addressed. Like a lot of people who don't really follow the group don't know that Johnny Gill was brought into the group by Bell Biv DeVoe to replace me, not new addition. I mean, not Bobby Brown. I'm sorry. When he came to the table, that's yeah, that's yeah, how yeah that's new. Yeah, so Wait, he was back, back up, back up, back <laughs> yeah, up, back up, back up. My my my, my. hold on, hold on, my <laughs> my my. <laughs> so Bobby, uh, excuse me. Uh, Because, you know, know, watching the biopic as if that is like, you know, Bobby was the problem, right? So Johnny was going to come in uh, and put on that red dress and those high heels. All right. So go ahead. So tell us, how how did this happen now? I mean, you know, without going too much into the biopic, because I want people to watch the whole thing. But that was a part of it that was that was addressed in detail Mm. and got down to the the facts of it, which basically uh, during the time right before the Heartbreak album came. I was working on a project. Well, I was just working on music and things outside of New Edition. I was doing other things. I was starting to get into producing, writing, and some of the stuff I was producing and writing, I was singing and doing myself, you know, for a probable album or maybe some stuff for New Edition. I really didn't know, but I knew I was just staying creative and and growing with the industry. And around that time, I think they got threatened that I was getting ready to try to leave the group or something. And this is what I heard later on. I'm Mm. expecting it wrong. But at that time, I got a call from Gerald Busby, who was the president of MCA at the time, and said, man, listen, I don't need a new edition without Ralph Tresman. And I'm like, what you talking about? I'm, I'm right here. I ain't going nowhere. What he? he said, well, they just left out of here with Johnny Gill. And he gave me the whole spill. It's like, I, and what he told me, you know, he said to them, he said, I told them the same thing. I don't, we can try some more comedy. We can add something, but I don't need to go out here and try to put out a new edition album without Ralph. And so, um. That's when he asked me to go down to Minneapolis. He said that they was going to be work. We were going to be working with uh, Jimmy and Terry, which had became my favorite producers, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis for Flight Time. And I, I put my stuff on hold with me to say, okay, that's fine. Let's do another new edition album. And he guaranteed he was going to put out or help me further what I was doing as an individual right after that project. So when I got down there, Johnny was there, and I still didn't had no part of the meetings or the conversation. Johnny was there as this new member, and I had never been a part of that whole conversation. So it was a lot of tension going on. Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis felt it, and eventually slid us to the side. Say, listen, man, what's going on here? And that's when it all started coming out. Well, I didn't know this is what's going on. And this wow. was like, Johnny's didn't even know. He was like, y'all didn't tell his brother that I was going to be that. And, you know, it was one of those things. And me and Johnny got together afterwards, sat down in a hotel room. And we've been best friends ever since, let's put it that way. We, we both got a, a we, we, we started a bond right then in 88 that's, that's still going on right now. So it's a slim, there was a slim window where if you had left because you were simply trying to grow, um, it would have been a four-man group because Bobby was out of there. So it had just been BBD and, and Gil? That's how it was going into, that's how we was going wow. into the, anyways, we was going into the new album as the four of us regardless. Right. So they was getting ready to um, go in there with the new four as a combination, yeah, with, with them three and Johnny. That wow. was the end. Uh-huh. They stand the rain without you. Yeah. They couldn't stand the rain, love unconditional. <laughs> they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. Love, you can't cool it now. You can't candy girl. You can't nothing without me, baby. No. <laughs> That's so Ralph I, Tre- wait, hold on. I, oh, okay. I got one. I got it. so Ralph Tresvan is here. Uh and the new docuseries, A Closer Look, is on UMC stream. You're gonna get all of the tea. I mm-hmm. read somewhere that you filled in for Bobby Brown on every little step. I take that you were doing the vocals on that because he couldn't couldn't get his vocals up. Is that true? That's not true at all. That's not true at all. I heard that a few times as well. And okay. but I do know this song was submitted to New Edition. 
prior to Bobby doing it, but we were at the end of doing, I don't forgot what album, that might have been the Heartbreak or the, the, the album right before that. I think it was the Heartbreak, but we were, um, we were submitted that song as a new edition record from Babyface, but we didn't have time to cut it. I don't know if we actually started on it, but then the budgets and time restraint was like, we got to put this album out now and we couldn't finish it or something like that. And But as far as I know, I'm not a part of that record. I'm not on there singing any backgrounds or any of that stuff. I've heard all of that, that they left my vocals in and I'm actually doing a lot of the background and stuff. That's Bobby singing. Bobby's doing his lead. Okay. Bobby's singing. Okay. I love you. You're a Taurus. Go ahead. No, <laughs> no, I wanted to go back to something you said at the beginning where you were like, you're trying to, it's time to work on you. And uh, you wanted to get your, your leg and, and, and focus, you know, on your solo situation. You've had a solo situation before. Um, you've had success at it. What, what does winning at this stage of the game, what does winning look like for you? Leaving something behind for the kids, continuing what I've been doing. You know, I think, I think winning is, I don't look at it as winning as so much as I look at it as being able to continue providing, take care of yourself, add into the, what you've been doing, growing. You know, mm -hmm. this journey is about growing and seeing if I can, how long I can keep it going, how long I can make it all last. That's what everybody's doing. Once you get out here, it's tough to get out there, but it's harder to maintain it. Yeah. So look back and I look at 30 years in the game, just other things I just wish I had done. You know, 40 something years I'm in the game. It's other things I wish I'd have gotten into. I'm into holistic medicine. I'm into science. I'm into, you know, I'm into writing books and producing. And I could have been putting out other artists and doing the whole thing that a lot of, I see Puffy and, and even my own man did, Michael did. He went out there and started putting boys to men and putting, group, putting groups out. Just other things that I've just kind of put to the side because I was primarily being father most of my life, husband, some dedicated to that side of my life and keeping it private and, Really, that's what I did the new edition thing for, to make sure I can always maintain and take care of that problem. Mm. You know, I always had the means to make sure that they had the things they needed. And I was able to do that, I mean, exceedingly well with new edition. I didn't need to do a lot of other things, so I didn't. And then looking back, when I, like, like and for instance, when they didn't want to go out on this last run that we was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. sitting around like, well, you know, if I really needed this one. Right. If I really was in a position where, I needed to go out right now and they just shot that down. What would I have done? Yeah. It woke me up in a, in a, in a, it woke me up in a way that I had never been woken up before and said, well, I got to make sure, you know, whoever it's in the music that industry, never need. wherever it's going to be, I could take care of myself. If everybody else decides they never want to do this again.